and thank you for joining us today. My name is Brittany Clark and this is my special report with Crises. Today we're here with Theresia Reynolds, right? Yes. Awesome. We have her here today. This is a woman of so many different talents. She's a woman of God. Yes. She also is a singer, she's a painter, and she does spoken word, right? Yes. Man, so many different things. Today we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that she's been through. We're going to talk about her talents. We're going to talk about her artwork and how uh, her condition almost challenged her relationship with God. Hydrocephalus or hydro Sapphires. I'm trying to remember the other pronunciation, okay. but basically it's where the brain detects a tumor that's not there and mm -hmm. starts producing extra spinal fluid and the sp spinal fluid piles up on the spine and crushes the spinal column. So your body goes into life support mode and you wake up one day and your body's like, well, we don't need to see. So you, you're blind. Oh, we don't need to eat solid food so you can only mm. digest liquids. Yeah. Um, you, you lose your fine motor skills over time. Uh, paraplegic on and off. Mm. And I was blind on and off. And this lasted from the age of 14 to almost 19. 14 to 19, that's a long time. Yeah. And I was permitted to take homeschool through the, uh, the um, public school system. So they sent teachers home to me for on and off. When I wasn't able to come to school, they would send teachers home to me so I could keep going. Um, the only special or elective program that was able to come and probably the only one I would have been able to do was art. Wow. And it was really crazy because the art teacher himself was actually paraplegic himself. They knew that my fine motor skills would cut in and out. Yeah. And the art teacher, I don't know if he really even considered how much therapy this would be for me, mm -hmm. but he had me start off with origami. Okay. Which actually forced me to keep, you know, just manipulating paper and manipulating my motor skills. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they would cut out, so there would be days when I couldn't use it, but my homework would still be, you're supposed to fold so many origami pieces. Yeah. And then to progress beyond that, and I was like, why do you have me doing origami if the, the <laughs> if we're doing art? Yeah. I mean, he was like, this is art. I was like, it's not an art form I'm interested in. Yeah. <laughs> And he would, he, he would say things like, an artist has to have a steady hand. Okay. An artist has to have an intentional hand. Mm -hmm. And in origami, you have to be intentional about the way you fold and manipulate the paper. And okay. then he took me from origami into calligraphy, which requires a steady hand. Okay. And when your motor skills are leaving you, often your hand is shaky. Mm -hmm. And it forced me to, to will myself to have a steady hand. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There has to be some times where you're just questioning, you know, things that's going on and you're saying, why me? Why this? You know, how did that impact your relationship with God? Um, I was very bitter, extremely bitter. Yeah. Um, I had, my father had left when I was a little girl. Okay. And before that had done damage to our family. Mm -hmm. So I was already bitter at that moment. And I had given my life to Christ when I was around six. And at 12, I declared myself an atheist. Oh, okay. So by the age of 12? By the age of 12. Wow. I had seen enough of child molesters and people trying to abuse me and people trying to... And I was never molested, but I had people attempt. Yeah. And I, I mean, my father wasn't there. And before he left, he used me to pick up other women and cheat on my mother. Oh, man. So there was so many moments of abuse and moments of neglect and being exposed to people who were just cruel that I assumed there could be no God. Yeah. But I'm also an extremely nerdy person. <laughs> so I love math and science. And math and science kept pointing me back to there is a creator. Right. Design does not miss a designer. Right. So I, I had to, to concede that there was a God. Mm -hmm. And I went through my process at starting at 14 to find God. Because I know you went through things with your father and other people and yeah. just trying to find yourself and your art and just finding yourself through your artwork. What are what, what would you say would be like the, the best impact or the best invite, advice that you would give to someone going through something like this? Mm -hmm. You have to look at it as how someone else is going to read your story. You're not living your life for you. You're living your life to give someone else a platform to stand on. 